it's a classic example of real restrictions of television. It also sort of captured, I think, what we were, what we were trying to say with the show. It's not science, but it feels like it sometimes. It's what I love about the show, which is that I have scenes like this. People used to say, 32 Watson Avenue ain't no place to raise a child. The director, George C. Wolfe, he, he described it as um, sort of analogous to a vaudeville show where each of these characters gets on stage and does their little thing and then the other one comes and the other one comes and there's the only thing linking them is that there's this main character, Nanny, um, who's played by Apatha Murkerson, who's sort of the soul of the piece, but there's no narrative per se. So the only thing that was going to keep it together to make it work would be the, the musicality of it and the rhythm, otherwise it would be plotless and, it, and there would be no reason for it. So, um, you know, everything that, that he con conceived in pre-production was how to make all of these what were essentially monologues into a kind of a music. When I was playing ball with the Negro leg, we used to travel all over. There was old Paul Carl, raconteur and king of the malaprops. New York City, now that's a city. That's a city where they got the statue of delivery. Well, the French give it to them, deliver her, put her right there in the harbor. And it was a, a challenge in some scenes. And this one, this one wasn't the most difficult, but it was challenging because I wasn't exactly sh sh sure, um, based on what they shot, how much I should fragment these little bits for this montage. That that the tracking shot, that or the handheld shot that appears at the beginning and a little bit at the end. Um, was one unbroken piece where you go from the, the stove to the, the car to the this to that to that. And I, you know, stupidly assumed that it was intended to be an unbroken sort of, you know, almost show-offy handheld shot where everything was happening in one take. And that was completely not what he was intending. He was intending it to be fragmented into little bits to be used as, as needed. And, um, you know, we discussed it and then that's what we proceeded to do, but um, you know, you could totally have gone another direction and kept it intact, but it wouldn't have hit all of the, you wouldn't have been able to create the, the, the percussiveness of it if you had um, left it, um, you know, s single. And then a lot of, some of the other pieces in that montage were stolen from other bits of the film where characters happen to be prominent or doing something that could be sprinkled in. So it's, it's a little bit of a hybrid of what, what, was, it, what it was shot for versus what we could sort of gather. Yeah. You know, it follows the script pretty, pretty clearly. It's just how do you how do you fill in the the, the gaps so that each little piece I is moving something forward and doesn't feel redundant and doesn't feel boring. Um, but the risk, w as with I, I think cutting anything, is is sacrificing c creating um, density and layers of meaning, but. If you go too far, then the fragmentation makes it unwatchable because you're, you're, it's chaotic. So I feel like I think our job is always to ride the line between, you know, a, just enough complication so that it actually has levels of meaning without being unwatchable. You know, but that's the that's the great fun is figuring out the the sort of sci almost science of it. it's not science, but it feels like it sometimes.